what I decided to do was start with the tow board. I'm uh, just going to start with the passenger side. This is the driver's side. This is the passenger side. So I'm going to mark those real quick. So drivers, passenger. I'm going to get these transferred over to some metal. I think I have a few little scraps kicking around. Oh, I think the gas tank's sitting on one of them. Uh, I'm going to grab some scraps, try to get these three pieces laid out on some scrap metal, some sheet metal. All right, I'm back. Uh, I got my sheet metal out of the trunk. And that's a factory edge and this is an edge. So I want to start with a factory edge, as always. Less cutting, if you can help it. You actually fit one right here. So what I'm doing is just transferring my templates over to the metal. So this is the driver's side. Get a little bit of weld spatter on this from tacking it in the car underneath the gas tank. Alright, so this is my bend line. What I'm probably going to end up having to do is eliminate yeah so this is this is to the trans so this is going to be one edge is going to be folded this way the other one's going to be folded this way actually not all the way so I'll probably just make a cut 45 degree cut right there for now and then figure out where it's going to be and then if I need to change it afterwards I can do that alright so that's the driver's side the passenger side yeah like I did here you can see where I just notched it so similar to that is what I'm gonna need to do here so anyways that there my bend lines So I'm going to be able to use my jump shear for these. Bend. I'll be able to use my jump shear on a lot of the, these little, like, little panels with the straight edges. Alright, bend, 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 and cut. Obviously I'll have to notch these out with snips. Cut. Cut. But I'll be able to do a lot of these small panels with my jump shear. Alright, so this one, I'm going to try to use my metal smart. So that either leaves me all of this area and then a little up here, or I can spin it. I'm going to go this way. Alright, so, but I need to go this way because when I do this jump shear, it will cut right to there. Alright, so this is over the transmission tunnel. Or this is the transmission tunnel. This is where it ties into the firewall. This is a bend. Bend. I have all these little cuts that I made bend cut cut bend bend and this is going to be bend this is cut 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 and then this is going to shape, I'm going to have to shape this with my English wheel or my slip roll. I'm going to bend these little 
fingers back because these fingers are what wrap around the bump out where the distributor is and that's a bend line so cut bend cut bend this seems to be a little different I'm just double checking it I'm flipping it over because it should be pretty close to symmetrical it looks like the passenger sides just a little bit I'm sorry the driver sides a little bit longer which is fine so uh, I'm gonna get I'm gonna get these cut out and then cut these up on my shear and then I'm gonna get this cut out probably with my handheld shears or my nibbler let's do that now I'm spray a little bit of croil on them I'm just going to separate the two end panels from this panel. I can get this trimmed off because I won't be able to get this in my shear if I don't. Like that. I'm going to get those couple of welds cleaned up real quick. But I recently purchased a tool that I've wanted for years. Wanted for a long time. Uh, when I first saw it come out, I thought it was amazing. I've seen Matt use it several times in his videos and every time I watch the video I think that tool looks amazing so I ended up buying one and I spent the money and got one for myself so before I get started on the floors I'm gonna hit the metal with the tool I bought and just by saying that I'm sure there's many of you people out there that know what I'm talking about I bought Eastwood SCT the contour and I have yet to open the box so you guys will get to see that all right everyone Eastwood and they shipped it super fast so thank you Eastwood and the people there I got it within I think two days and with the way uh, you know the postal services and places like that have been just inundated with with uh, shipping and uh, you know lower number of trucks and whatnot from what I'm told I was really happy that I got it so fast. All right, so check it out. I got the Eastwood Contour SCT. I didn't know if it came with a drum, finishing drum, I think. Yeah, it includes a finishing drum and a set of spray brushes. So that must be the motor brushes. Uh, I guess the finishing drum would probably be what I need to just clean up this metal. I ordered the steel wire drum, which is what you see here. I don't know if that camera's not focusing or not. So I got the steel wire drum. I got the 
interleaf stripping drum and the inter oh that's uh the 120 grit and the 80 grit so i got these three drums plus the drum that it came with which is the finishing drum uh there were a few other things that i wanted to buy but they were on back order and it said that if i were to order them the Eastwood's website had said if I were to order the additional items that were back ordered, that it would delay the remainder of my order. And I didn't want to delay it because I knew I was going to be getting ready to work on these floors pretty soon. And I wanted to be able to clean the metal before I got everything bent up in my brake and whatnot. So it didn't make sense to make more work for myself having to, to, to get into all the corners and, and the edges and stuff after the fact. So I decided let's spend the money and get something I've wanted for a long time. And it'll certainly make my life easier. Or the videos that I've seen online certainly seem that it makes their life easy. So why wouldn't it make my life easy? So we got some Allen wrenches that come in the package with an extra set of brushes and the D handle. Uh, I would imagine that's pretty necessary, seeing how this thing is of substantial size. Yeah, and the the bolts are already you know only partially threaded in, so. Otherwise, I don't really see any way to hold it. So let me open this bag up. Make sure I mark these extra brushes for the motor. Make sure they don't get lost. I'm going to get this handle mounted. Clamp down my metal and... Uh, I don't know, I guess it goes forwards. I'm sure you could probably mount it either way. I like forwards. Come to think of it, I don't know if I've really ever watched any other YouTube channels or YouTubers that actually use these. Not to say they don't, but I just, I don't recall if I've ever seen anyone else on YouTube that I watch using them. I just want to label it so I can put it in my little cabinet so I know that this goes to the contour. I don't want to lose it. Actually throw it in there with that. Alright, I'm going to get that thing plugged in and away we go. I can't sand it because I'm going to sand all my marks off. <laughs> well... Like anything else, you live and you learn. Uh, so if I sand this with that contour, it's going to take all my marks off. So what I think I'm going to do is... I'm going to just take my little cutoff wheel. I'm going to make some real small marks on my bends where I need to bend things. And then I'll be able to just re remark the line with my marker afterwards. <laughs> Like that. Alright, so I should be able to get these cut now and still have my marks, that my little score marks that I just made, so I can just bend it up afterwards. So you can see just little little marks that I made. So I'm gonna head over to the shear. I gotta move a few things off the shear. Grab my gloves. Hopefully it won't die halfway through. Perfect. All right, let's get to work. That's one. All right, so cut there.
All right, so now what I need to do is I need to cut these in half. Cut right there. All right, bend, bend, cut in the middle. Cut right there. <coughs> All right, so now. This so bend driver's side. All right, so that's my driver's side, and this. Uh, all right so what I need to do now is just notch notch it here and here and then get these bent in the brake so let me go knock these out I'll go grab my my uh, snips so what I'm gonna do for now is just actually no I can't going to so this is the driver's side and this is the passenger side so this is going to go up and that's going to go down so that means I'm going to cut it here these bent up in the brake all right I had to take off for a little while and went went and met one of my buddies who I actually do work for he just bought a piece of property and it had a big garage on it and inside the garage were a bunch of old cars so I went down and met him there because he had told me if he makes a deal on the property that he would show me inside the building so I went down there and I think I ended up just buying a 1950 Cadillac <laughs> with a 331 in it that's a complete car so uh, it's a four-door Cadillac like I said I think it's a 49 or a 50 I know it's a 331 um, yeah it should make a great hot rod motor I don't particularly have a car to put it in at the moment but it's always nice to have a early Cadillac engine sitting in the shop. I don't want the whole car because they're big boats, but I'll pull the drivetrain out of it. So if anybody's interested in a 49 to 50 Cadillac four door or any parts off of it, it's a complete car. Uh, I'm going to just remove the motor from it and, and kind of just probably part out the rest of it. Probably keep the steering wheel, uh, maybe a few other things. So we'll see. But it might not happen, so in any event, uh, I had left off working on these small little pieces for the tow board. Uh, I made my marks. What I'm going to do now is I'm actually going to hit these with the Eastwood contour. And then I can remark where I need to bend my steel. Then I'll remark everything where I need to bend it. And then I'll go over to the brake and get everything bent up where it needs to be. So let's do that. This is my maiden voyage with the Contour SCT. So that's on uh, speed number three. Wow, that's amazing. Might as well do the backside too, because that's going to get painted at some point. Well, 
Well, tell you what, I don't think you could do it much faster than that. And I still have, uh, you can still kind of see my bend marks, so I'll be able to just go back over them real quick with, with my sharpie. Did I already flip it over? Huh! So both of these are done that fast. Unbelievable. Amazing. I gotta take a picture and post this up online. I just bought a 49 Cadillac. <laughs> gotta love it. You gotta strike when the iron's hot. Is that is that the term? Yeah. I don't know what I did with my ruler. You gotta get it while the getting's good. Get these out of the way. You gotta. What else is that? What are what are the, what are the phrases? You gotta make hay when the sun shines. You gotta. I don't know. Skrrr. Right, like I said, I can still. Still make out my sharpie lines. So the Cadillac has a 331 in it, V8, 1949. I think it's a 49, maybe not. I know it's 49 to 51, 52. Uh, it's a black Cadillac. It's got, I think it's got 16 inch wheels. It's got sombreros. Uh, fender skirts, four door. She's a beaut, Clark. Uh, I'll go tomorrow and do a quick video of it so I can show you guys what I ended up buying. I didn't buy it yet. I I committed to it. Yeah. Now I just gotta go pick it up. All right. So let's get these bent up. So this is passenger side, and this is the driver's side. So, All right, so that's, it's actually not going to be 90 degrees. Hey, honey, what up? I decided what I want my winnings to go towards now. You're on video, so watch it. <laughs> Careful what you say. Video. Oh, you can't? Yeah. Yeah, so. 1949 Cadillac, four door. Complete car. Just what you need. I want the motor. Are I'm going to sell, sell the rest it? of it. You're going to sell it. Oh, I don't want the car. I don't want you the car. You never sell anything. I don't. Hun, the thing's 30 feet long. Yeah, where is it? It'll fall go? through my garage if I were to pull <laughs> it in it. He said, find out how much it weighs and find out what the scrap is. It weighs 3,955 pounds. Scrap is $170 per ton so it came out to three hundred and forty dollars so I said I'll give you three hundred fifty bucks seriously <laughs> he bought another car yeah I did well no it's a motor Izzy's <laughs> pissed off too so while I've been busy slaving away working I'm making money girl Michael's I'm out making, doing making moves without me that's what they say yeah I'm telling you so I'm gonna make that so uh, there's a bunch of other cars in there, too. Okay. There's a Dodge Polara. I think I showed you it. It's like a like a champagne pinkish purple. I'm going to put shrimp on the salad. Shrimp on the barbie. Well, yeah. I want the steak. What the heck, Michael? What? Yeah, I'm celebrating. I want I want steak. We have shrimp and steak. Shrimp on the barbie. I can make shrimp. Um, so... I bought a Cadillac. Yay. I am such a high roller. I came out to get some shrimp. Yeah, I went to go pick up a check from Jamie, and he said, hey, it's coming. Oh, look what else I found. Ha! Ha ha! Check what else I found. I Hold on. I don't want to know. They're really, they're rare. rare hard to find. They're rare and hard to find. Mm -hmm. You know how hard they are to find them? That you can't even find them. But I don't right know where now. I put them. 
Wow. I got them for free. Mm, headlight dancers? These are shock mounts. Oh. They're really that's hard what I to mean. find. Look. I have another pair there. They look like your headlight And I have a pair on, on the car. And I have Why another pair. Yeah, these are like 75 bucks now they get for Oh, them. good. I'm going to sell I it. I said, hey, I'm going to take them. He goes, yeah, just take them. Whatever. Oh, they were free? Yeah. Oh, good. I'm going to sell them. If I sell these on my challenge, I will whoop your butt. You're book. already whooping my butt. He cheats. I don't cheat. Yeah, he does. I don't cheat. I'm. We need to do an update. I'm tied down to my computer I'm tied down to these damn he kids. He needs to go gallivanting around. I don't gallivant. Down. So I told Michael right off the bat, he's cheating. I'm not a gallivant. Because so many people know him and just... Him oh yeah, anything. I'm so popular. Nobody tells me about anything. Yeah, everybody knows well, me. Well, except oh, for one of our oh. friends does help me out a little. Oh yes, I everybody. Don't, I don't know what everything is. Well, I don't know what everything is either. He knows more than I do. Well, yeah, because I'm a car guy, and that's yeah. what car guys do. They know things. Oh, well, a car guy, you make dinner tonight. Uh, yeah. yeah. Love you. All right, let's finish breaking these, bending these up in the break. Put that right there. Right chair. All right, let's find a little space. I don't know if I like that. I have a couple of the teeth taken out and spread out, so when I gotta bend something, I don't have to move things around and remove the teeth. So you can see where I just notched a little triangle out of that. I'll show you. So I notched that triangle out right there. So what that allowed me to do was to fold up this lip and meet that edge. So if I have to adjust it, I can still adjust it a little bit. And I'm just going to do the same here on this one. I'll close that little gap. I probably should have taken my slide slide angle finder or whatever you call it to figure out exactly what angle I needed it to be but we can always adjust it afterwards so that is the driver's side I think this flange is actually going to have to go out just a touch because this is where the transmission tunnel comes down uh, but let's put them in the car and let's try them out can you see yeah alright so Go over to the driver's side. That's that one. And this is the passenger side. Let's just see where we're at with the passenger side so far. So there's a little lip that's broken already in, like a flange. It goes there. That's gonna go there. So you can see where this flange just has to go in some to start where I'm going to tie in the middle piece to that, but I can adjust it. Uh, but for the most part, I'm pretty happy with that. This firewall is just back a touch. Oh, you know what I need to do? I need to actually modify this as a bump here. This is probably for a right-hand drive setup if the truck had gone overseas. Uh, Ford did that a lot of times. They made them so you could have either right-hand drive or left-hand drive. Obviously, we have left-hand drive here in the States. So it's not sitting down all the way, just because it's hitting on that little bump right there. Either that or I'll modify the actual panel that I just made to fit with the bump there. But I like that. That fits good. And my panel, my side panel here, my kick panel, is going to overlap it. So I'm happy with that. With there being a little bit of a space, that's fine. Let's uh, adjust this light a little bit. So now let's... And again, I know I don't have my pedals in place, and I'm purposely doing this without my pedals in place. Uh, this lip is broke up a little too far, so I'm actually going to have to flatten that down a little bit. But for the size, everything the way it needs to be, I'm happy with it. And again, this needs to be just tipped this way a little bit, a little bit more. I broke it too far. I broke it at almost 90 degrees. It probably should have been more at like, I don't know. 60 or something like that so I'll reshape these flanges on the side 
of each one of those panels and then I'm going to get to work on cutting out my centerpiece for over my transmission tunnel. Now I need to figure out what is going to be the best way to get some shape in this panel. And I really think the only way for me to do it is to use my stretcher. So I need, the panel needs to be somewhere like that. And this lip needs to be up like that. Or, you know, something like that is what I need to create. So I have the lip, I have these little flanges here that's going to attach to my firewall. Now what I need to do is I need to create the shape. And in order to do that, for one I need to start working the edge with my shrink, uh, with my stretcher. And then two, I could probably just, really just as I'm doing it, I could probably just really start bending it with my hands and it should to go all right so I will introduce you to my homemade shrinker stretcher stand I bought just the head unit and <laughs> you probably got you guys will get a kick out of this a few of my friends have seen it and they're like what the hell is that so I'll show you so this is just your average ordinary Chinese shrinker stretcher it has a separate set of jaws here but what I did was this this little piece here is from a dirt bike from a back brake on a dirt bike it's like a clever so something like that this is just the threaded a bolt that fit in there this is just a flat piece of quarter inch quarter inch by three quarter inch flat stock going down to an early Ford drag link which still has the ball in it connected to an early Ford Pittman arm from a Model A that was in a scrap pile to a wide five I think this is actually a truck rim and one of my buddies saw this and was mortified that I cut up I guess these are rare I didn't know at the time I found it in a field this bar, this tube stock is actually the 2 by 3 inch stock that I used to do the Z. I Z'd my frame on my Model A two-door sedan. So then what I did is I had planned on someday getting another, another one of these units. So I drilled holes both sides for another one to face that way. And then I used stock original Model A body mounts brackets the brackets for a model a body mount uh, and I'll show you how it works and it's 
we got some mighty fine engineering going on right here uh, I stole this from NASA as you can tell it's very well thought out I think this is like some type of a body shim or something and then I just have a bolt here that rotates and it, it's loose it moves it's supposed to I think this is actually from my Jeep I don't know but in any event it's not the prettiest thing in the world but I'll tell you what she's a working girl she knows her job and she does it well I'll give you a little demonstration on her let me pull these jaws out of here put this back I always lose these they always fall out when I take this out pieces usually go flying just keep that magnetic tray there there we go just like I said I always drop these damn things all right so now I gotta remember how it goes in son of a gun I missed shrink or stretcher day in school I think I was absent that day nope All right, I got Humpty Dumpty back together again. I don't know if that's right or not. We'll see. Oh yeah, good. All right, so we got a stretcher. Now we need to stretch. Let's do some stretching, people. I'm just going to go, I'm going to stretch it. I'm going to go the width of the throat each time. And I'll go back. I'll go back over it afterwards. These sides, I think, will be able to stay pretty much as is got a little bit of a lip on this one so let me straighten that one out come on get in there girl get in there Woo -hoo. come on now come on now come on open your damn mouth oh there we go good to talk to it sweet talk it I remember looking at the prices of shrink or stretcher stands and thinking at the time I didn't have the money to buy one. Just kind of looked at them and thought, well, that looks pretty simple. I could probably make that myself. All right, so you can see I'm really starting to get some shape out of this now. You can see my lip. It's starting to really bend. Let's go see how close I am. I, I know I'm still a ways off, but just for the heck of it. Just so I don't go too far, because if you go too far, it's a lot more work to, to go backwards. So, I think my camera died, but because I have a camera upgrade, I have extra batteries now. So isn't that just a magical thing? So I don't know when my camera died, but I grabbed an old wooden mallet that I got from an old timer. It's got like a leather wrap on it on the head, one of the one side of the head. And I just kind of tapped down the middle to try to flatten this out a little bit. So I'm getting close, at least on the bottom. I don't have any structure under here, so you can see this is still kind of moving up and down. So what I'm gonna do here isn't gonna be a hundred percent carved in stone, so to speak. But it's just, I just want to get it close. I actually need to cur like, curl this edge and this edge around the back side of the firewall. They actually need to go like forwards. And I don't know how I'm going to do that because I can't really move all this metal forwards. You need to curl these ends down still. can 
see I gotta trim this back. Yeah, I'm I'm up kind of a ways. Oh, that's why. All right, so. These bottom edges really need to curl in a lot, but I actually think I gotta get rid of some of the material that's under them for that's on them first. I think it's just a touch too long. A lot of guys make these in two or three pieces, I know, and I'm really not, you know, I mean if I have to I will, but I'm, I'm trying to get better at this, so I wanna really try to make this in one piece, you know. Uh, just to improve. If I just keep doing the same thing every time, you're never really going to improve. So I'm just looking at it, trying to figure out exactly what it needs to do. And first off, I think I need to trim this down about a quarter of an inch on each side. That'll allow me to bring this, bring these ends in without pushing the middle up. It really can't go up. I can't go up much. Alright guys, so I've been struggling with this for a little while now and I just decided to make my life a little bit easier. I'm going to make this this transmission tunnel in two separate pieces and then just weld it in the middle. Um, just no matter what I did, I just I didn't think I was going to be able to get it shaped the way I needed it with one I'm sure if I if I had more knowledge, more skill, or maybe different tools, I don't know. I'm sure I probably would have been able to manage it, but I figured in the effort to just keep things moving, there's really nothing wrong with taking a panel and turning it into two if it's if it's especially if it's gonna make your life a lot easier. I'm trying to get this working good so. I can start to fit this piece in here. All right, so I'm doing good now here on this end, but because I know it's hard to see, but up here, it's hitting this back bump out and it's not allowing it to move forwards. It's got to go forwards about, I don't know, half an inch, three quarters of an inch. And if you look, I'm going to make a mark to show you where it's stopping. It's stopping half to three quarters of an inch before this lip where it, where it sets down. So where this flange is actually going to, this is supposed to sit in here like that. And if I were to do that, it just pushes this piece of metal up a lot, for, oh, unless I curl it around. So that's what I mean, I'm just trying to, I'm just taking my time. If I would almost bend this piece of metal like that, this may actually curve around and start to come around that. So why don't I try that? I have a Pexto anvil rail, and look how dusty it is. I don't really use it that often. But, that being said, having it is a huge help when you need it. Got to figure out which anvil is going to be the best one to make that bend. Uh, might be somewhere in, might be somewhere in this region, or. Maybe use this one, but I'm going to try this one right here on this end. Like I had said, I need to, I need to kind of bend the metal in this region. I kind of think it might swap it out. So. so what I'm doing is I'm just taking this metal and I'm just keeping it centered where I want it to be bent. And I'm just bending it over this rail. It's kind of giving me it's kind of giving me the shape I need more or less. So, I'm going to go back over to the car and see 
see where that puts me. Well, I am 90% there now. I'm gonna bend this down. Grab the marker. That's better. Uh, just in the process of trying to get get this laying down the way I want it to. Um, I hope you don't come here to learn because you <laughs> learn not what not to do. I wrestled with this flange for a while trying to get it flat instead of it, you know, because this kind of is, is sticking up. It kind of goes uphill. So I, I need to tip this down and then bend this flange forward. So I'm going to work on that next. And then kind of see where I'm at. I'll spin you just a little bit. You can see where somehow I'm way off with my bend. This actually needs to be way over here almost. But I don't want to go any further than the edge of this firewall, so I may end up having to remake a new one of these or just reshape that flange. I don't want to flare this way out if I don't need to, like the bottom here. Because it's just going to take foot room away. I want to tuck it in as much as I can. I mean, I might be able to flare it out just a touch. But like I said, I don't want to go... I don't want to go too crazy. Alright, so what I ended up doing was... I was able to get the passenger side fitted really, really close. I made a couple little modifications just a few minutes ago on my vise. Just putting in my vise like this and just... Kind of tipping this edge right here to match this side. Uh, what I ended up doing while it was in the car, I got it set in place. I just threw a tack weld on each end. So you can see it's overlapping about a half of an inch. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to take my cutoff wheel and I'm just going to run it straight up. I'll remove this, clamp it back on this side, then run this side. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to weld them together. I'll butt weld it together at that point. Alright, so now what I gotta do is weld them together like that. Just wanna get right at the ends tack.
So I'd say, as far as MIG welding goes, I'm pretty happy with that. I think when it's, it's all said and done, it's going to look just fine. Can't really get too crazy on these transmission tunnels, so. Um, so I got a little bit of weld to fill right there. It may be a bit much, so I probably might just let that go. But I got the two halves of the transmission tunnel welded together. Welded it from the back side. Used the welder plus the heat, like, I mean, plus the air like I usually do. We got a little bit of, a little bit of shaping to do. I don't have any hammer over here, so I can't really do anything right now, but. That is going to get me pretty darn close to what I'm looking for. So just a little bit of tweaking here and there. I want to tap this center down right here so I can get it clecoed in place. And then I'll be able to get the front edge of this up against the firewall clecoed in place. This panel ended up working out good once I rebent the flange. Driver's side panel's good. So, I'd say all in all, that's pretty good. So, so that's it for me on the tow board. So I got the, the, the main, all the majority of the work done on the tow board tonight. So at this point now, moving forwards, I'm going to start working on the remainder of the floor going down into the seat pan. Uh, that'll be on the next video. So thanks everybody for watching. See you soon. Take care. Bye-bye.